on Saturday night, May 15th, the J-League was born. With a dream to support the growth of the global game in Japan and provide a foundation for the sporting dreams of youth all over the country, this moment would be the kickoff for what would ultimately become Asia's top league. From this night, the J-League would embark on a path of tremendous growth. With ambitions of supporting football's long-term future in Japan, a who's who of legends dotted pitches and touchlines across the league in the 90s. From homegrown heroes like Kazuyoshi King Kazumura to global icons like Zico, Leonardo, and Gary Lineker. Future stars would get their starts here, not only on the pitch, but off it as well. The great Arsene Wenger, for one, would win silverware in Nagoya before filling another trophy cabinet in London. And this was just the beginning. For the first time, the world was taking notice of the explosive growth of the Japanese game as success for J-League's teams and players abroad became a regular occurrence by the end of the decade. From Jubilo Iwata's triumph in the Asian Club Championship to Bamare's Hidetoshi Nakata turning heads in a World Cup, the J-League was becoming known for not only importing international stars, but exporting them as well. As the new millennium dawned, so did a new reality for domestic players as the likes of Shunsuke Nakamura and Shinji Ono starred in European top flights and paved the way for even bigger Japanese stars in the years to come, like Keisuke Honda and Shinji Kagawa. But Samurai Blue stars were not the only J-League products taking that leap. Take for example Park Ji-sung, whose legendary professional career runs through Manchester United and PSV Eindhoven, but begins in Kyoto. By the end of the aughts, football in Japan had reached new heights, with continental crowns for the likes of Urawa Reds in Gamba Osaka, J-League alums on the brink of European stardom, and a total attendance record reaching 100 million strong by midsummer of 2010. This journey, however, would not be without trials and tribulations, and the arrival of the 2010s also ushered in a new wave of challenges, and even catastrophes. The Great East Japan Earthquake, the most powerful tremor ever recorded on these shores, killed over 15,000 people and shook a country to its core. A global financial crisis loomed over society and touched all parts of the Japanese economy. But out of so many of these challenges came an opportunity for reflection and recognition that J-League was not only a league of Japan, but a product of the world and a part of a global football community. And with that new understanding came a shift in strategy a desire to seek beyond Japan further than ever before, and to connect and embrace neighbors through football. In 2012, J-League took its first official steps in this direction, beginning its Asia strategy, a program that aimed to connect the continent through J-League, increasing the fan base of Japanese football while also helping football develop across the region. We needed to think about something new, and we need to find a kind of a new market. And uh, the other reason is that uh, Japan was one of the kind of strongest country in football in Asia. If you see the Asian football, the level is far, far away from, from Europe or South America. So we thought that uh, it is very important for Asian football uh, to grow together. So the J-League and the Japanese football has many things to share with the rest of the country in Asia. So th that's how we started this uh, Asian strategy project. With the sophisticated segmentation strategy, J-League would seek to bring top Asian talent to Japan, thus increasing the global interest in the league and catalyzing football development throughout the continent, especially in Southeast Asia. We see a huge potential in, in Southeast Asia as a football nation because of the passion, but they are kind of lacking know-how and uh, kind of the knowledge or expertise to develop the, the own uh, football, own league. So we are quite happy to kind of be, share our know-how with the country in Southeast Asia. Beginning with signing memoranda of understanding with the top leagues in Thailand, Vietnam, and Myanmar in 2012, action items were put in place to use football as a bridge of cooperation and development between these countries. The first target, Thai League to Thailand, and the Vietnam and the Myanmar. Uh, because Thailand and Vietnam are the, one of the strongest country and a very growing country in terms of football. 
What once seemed unlikely quickly became the norm, as players from throughout Southeast Asia joined J-League clubs not long after the beginning of the project, including the likes of Le Kong Vin from Vietnam. It was a very historical moment. He was playing really well. He played better than everybody was expecting. Irfan Bakhtim from Indonesia, and Bakhtim's compatriot Stefano Lilipali, who also landed in Sapporo. You know, this is where you dreamed of, this is where you spoke about, and now, and Consodo is an amazing team. Every morning I was excited to go training, you know, teammates from teammates until, until the chairman, you know, you saw the, the passion for football and really like everybody was there and, and everybody show up to be better every day, you know. Theo bạn thấy thì họ bên đó bóng đá của họ rất là kỷ luật và họ chơi bóng rất là nhanh. Chẳng hạn như họ khi mà họ có bóng thì họ xử lý bóng rất là nhanh và những cái kỹ năng cơ bản của họ thì rất là tốt. Theo phượng nghĩ đó là sự khác biệt và những cái kỹ chiến thuật chiến thuật của họ rất là họ rất là tuân thủ về chiến thuật rất là tốt. Đó while the players wouldn't always have long careers in Japan, the experience was regarded as invaluable, and the project continued to unearth talented footballers from across the region. It makes me a lot more stronger, you know, the experience to go there, to see new things, to see other cultures, how they work, how they start their day, you know, because it's also different, you know. We show up 6 o'clock on the training pitch and everybody is already in the locker room. I nghĩ là về ý thức của bản thân và ý thức về chiến thuật chẳng hạn như là lúc mà ở Việt Nam thì phượng đá theo kiểu như là tự phát nhiều hơn và khi mà mình cái sự chiến thuật thì mình không uh, làm triệt để nhưng mà khi về đó thì phượng ý thức được là mình phải theo chiến thuật của huấn luyện viên và mình phải làm đúng những gì mà huấn luyện viên đã đề ra và mình phải hạn chế những cái mà tự phát của bản thân mình yeah. khi mà sang đấy phượng học hỏi được là không chỉ là hầu vệ phòng ngự mà tiền đạo cũng phải biết là cách phòng ngự. The expansive collaboration between Japanese and Southeast Asian football can only partially be seen through the players who have come to J-League, though. Over the years, the JFA and J-League have hosted many countries, engaging in talks, workshops, and extended collaborative exercises to exchange ideas. So it's not only about the J-League, but also for Asian football. So J-League kind of take an initiative to bring the level to the next level. The JFA and J-League have also sent officials throughout Southeast Asia to aid football development locally across the region. At the club level, many J-League teams have followed suit with partnerships over the years, including Yokohama F. Marinos with Sufanburi FC of Thailand, Matsumoto Yamaga with Geelang International FC of Singapore, and Kawasaki Frontale with Bekamex Binduang of Vietnam, where they've even started a football school. We encourage more Japanese club uh, travel to ASEAN country to have like uh, football clinics or you know football workshops such kind of the on-ground activity we could manage a lot of activities in in, in, a, in a local uh, nation so that, that, that's that's very good back in japan j league would go on to not only import promising talent from across the region but eventually create legitimate superstars Thailand in particular became a focus as J-League interest in the market exploded with the arrival of national heroes like Chanatip Songkrasin, Tiratan Bunmatan, and Tirasin Danga. From Chanatip's best 11 season in 2018 with Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo, to Tiratan's title-winning contributions the following season with Yokohama at Marinos, the J-League's Asia strategy has quickly built stars in Japan from across the region, and also a global audience tuning in every week. For a further look at this, you should tune in to part two of our video series and the accompanying articles to get to know a little bit more about J-League superstars from Southeast Asia, past, present, and surely future. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like, subscribe, push notification. Like, subscribe, push notification.